All right, let's look at the floor tools. So I'm going to go first to my architecture tab up here. I'm going to go over here to where it says floor. Now, if I click on this little arrow, it's going to give me some options for multiple types of floors and a floor slab edge. Uh, but we're going to just stick with the architectural floor. I'm going to click that. And uh, if I go down here into my properties panel, you'll see that my properties have changed to include my floor. Uh, it's looking for levels and uh, you can input whatever level you want here if you have multiple levels in your project or if there's a height offset. Uh, so this is great for things like a mezzanine or something where you've got, a, you know, like a four foot area that's raised above the rest of your floor. Um, so I have my floor options here. What I can do if I click on this large bar here is I can scroll down and look at all the different floor types that are included uh, in Revit just as a default. Lots of different types. Uh, and if I look at any of these, let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. So let's look at uh, let's look at this lightweight concrete on metal deck. Uh, if I click on that, you don't see any like major changes to the properties here. But I have this button here that says Edit Type, and if I click that button, I can go in and take a look at the structure. So the very first option I have up here is Structure. Uh, it'll tell me the overall thickness of the floor and whether it's an interior or exterior slab. Uh, and then I have the option for how this floor appears at a coarse scale. Uh, I also have some other options here uh, for analytical properties and things, and I'm not going to worry too much about those right now. If I hit the Edit button, I can see uh, all the different layers from my floor. So in this case, it is lightweight concrete on a metal deck. Pretty simple stuff. Um, if I hit my preview button down here, I can see those layers in person. So here's my four inches of lightweight concrete, and here's my eighth inch metal deck. Uh, there's some important things to note here. Uh, one is that there's an insert button here where we could click this and insert layers either above or beyond uh, our, our core area. Uh, and add those based on category and thickness if we want. The other thing to note is uh, that you can delineate the sh which, which ones of the floor layers are structural materials, and you have this button for variable. So if I click the checkbox on either of these, when I change different points of height on my floor, this will determine which layers, if any, vary to make up those height differences. So if you imagine that this is a sloped floor with a drain right in the middle here, uh, you can tell it if it's if it's variable uh, just for the concrete or if the deck would also vary as well. Uh, so you have lots of different options there. If I hit OK, I hit OK again because uh, I haven't changed any settings. And if I do change settings, by the way, the best practice to do that when you hit Edit Type is to first duplicate it and rename your floor something else uh, descriptive. So you don't want to overwrite the, the standard floors that you're using, just so you have them. Um, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to see everything. If you have anything in your view, like in this case I have, um, I have my elevation markers, you can see them turn gray. We're in something called sketch mode now. And sketch mode allows us to use a set of 2D lines to create a profile that will then be extruded in the shape of our floor. Now I can do that several different ways. Um, I have lots of different sketch options up here, and you'll notice that under this is under the Modify tab uh, where this is popped up. So these little options here under the green palettes are the ones you're going to want to look at. So we have lots of different shapes we can make our floor. Uh, you can just use the Line tool, and it'll chain the lines together so you see those options pop up here. Uh, if you want to offset your floor from your cursor, uh, or you can change it so that there's a radius uh, for all those joins. Uh, so I'm going to just use the rectangle tool now and make a rectangular floor. Uh, when I do that, I get two little lines that pop up that show the, the structural direction for the floor. So that's what those are delineating. The other thing I have, I'm going to just hit escape a few times to get out of sketch, uh, or out of the drawing mode, is I have the ability to add a slope arrow. So if I click on this, I can create a slope arrow for my floor. And if I select the slope arrow, it's going to give me the ability to specify the height at the tail and head uh, of my floor to make it slope exactly how I want it to slope. I can also change the span direction here. Uh, so I have the ability to click on a line and pick span direction, and uh, it'll change that span direction. Okay. 
One more important thing to note about floors is that uh, when you create a floor, it uses what's what I like to call the donut rule. So you can't ever have overlapping items to specify in a floor. All of these things have to be trimmed and separate. Um, Revit assumes right away that if you have a secondary object in your floor sketch, that you want this to be a hole and you want this to be a solid and this is obviously void space or nothing is modeled here. So it's going to assume uh, that every time you put a shape inside of a shape, it's going to create a donut. Now, if I put another shape inside of this donut hole, it's going to create two floors. It's going to create one here and then one on the very inside. I'm just trying to assume the most logical thing uh, that you can do. Now, if you want to create a floor like this where you have concrete here and then there's a void and then there's a secondary area out here, uh, that's also the same material, you're going to have to create a second floor sketch that's a separate piece of floor that just butts right up against this because uh, unfortunately you can't have these lines intersect and overlap. It just it won't finish the sketch properly. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and uh, hit escape a few times on my lovely little floor sketch and I'm going to hit the finish edit mode, which is very important whenever you're in sketch mode to make sure that when you exit out, you hit that green arrow and it's going to create my floor for me. Lightweight concrete, 3D, there's our floor. Very beautiful.